Welcome around Slotbox. Today we're going to tie a spin-off pattern of a very well-established pattern. Most of you all know uh, I've tied it here and I've got a video online. Uh, it's, it's a very effective pattern across multiple styles of water and uh, species of fish. That pattern is the Golden Retriever. If you haven't fished it, look for it on my site and tie it. Uh, it will not let you down. Every year it brings some of the largest fish to hand both warm water and uh, cold water fisheries uh, that I catch. I highly recommend it. The pattern we're going to tie today is called the mink coated retriever. It's based off of the golden retriever. And uh, let's go over how we tie it. We start off with a standard 3x long streamer hook or woolly bugger hook you'll see it uh, labeled as. And we're going to wrap 20 odd lead substitute wire starting at the point of the hook moving forward to a point two eye lengths back from the eye and then the next material you're going to tie in is red flat waxed nylon I think the original pattern for the Golden Retriever was tied with floss. Uh, it has since been moved to red flat waxed. I prefer the flat waxed. You're going to start in the middle of the wire and you're going to bring your thread forward, build a dam in front of the wire, then bring your thread back over the lead, build another dam behind, lock that in place good and tight. and then you're going to bring your thread back to a point just about even with the barb to the to the end of the shank the next material you're going to tie in is extra small copper wire I use the ultra wire this is the extra small I don't want the wire to be a prominent part of the pattern I need it to anchor the the wing you're going to tie that behind the lead, wrap back to the rear of the hook and rear of the shank, and let your wire get out of the way. The next material you're going to tie in is gold or peach estaz. This is the small and you're going to strip a small piece, small section off so you just expose the thread core. You don't have to, but it has a little less bulk and it ties it into the lead a little bit better. And you're going to tie that little tag in right behind the lead. I didn't pinch wrap there because I wanted to grab it right at the back of the lead. I'm more worried about getting the transition even. And the only uh, difference you're doing right now from a golden retriever is instead of tying in the the marabou tail, you've tied in the copper wire. At this point, you're going to build your body. And you're going to wrap your thread to cover everything. You can be as nitpicky as you want with this. My goal is just to cover the lead so you don't see it, or lead substitute, whichever one you're using. Some people use red ultra wire. I've seen that. Gives a little bit different look. I'm st I stick with uh, what is the most common and uh, brought me to a love for this pattern. So, and it was with flat flat wax nylon. So I find that when I start to deviate from things too much, the effectiveness of that pattern goes down and uh, you can look right back to what you've changed. Next step you're going to do is you're going to palmer that estaz forward and you're going to leave about a material length gap, maybe twice as wide as the thread core of this estaz between each wrap. 
you want to leave that red flat wax showing through it gives that that red flash that uh, variegated looking body and I believe as the originator did that uh, that is the key to this pattern the flash and the red not sure if it appears red under water to a fish but the thread works so stick with it don't fight what works and you're going to anchor that thread or that SDAS right in front of the wire trim it I don't worry too much about where that's sitting right now because it really doesn't matter. You're going to have a few strands of this. You can trim it off if you want. It's not going to change the effectiveness of the fly. The next step you're going to, you're going to do is you're going to tie in a zonker strip. Now I cut these zonker strips out of beaver that I have. It's chestnut beaver or chestnut mink, I'm sorry. And uh, I cut them three shank lengths, the th uh, three shank lengths in, in length. Uh, not the entire hook, just the shank. And you're going to trim a little portion in the front. And what you're going to do, we'll get a little bit of that estas out of there. You're going to tie that in with the fur starting right where you tied off your estas. So you're going to leave about a two eye length head. You're going to cinch that leather down. Tie that in good and tight on top of the shank, and then you're going to leave it. Make sure you're on top. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to prepare that zonker strip. Now there's a lot of ways to do it. You can use water, you can, you can wet it before you tie it in. I use saliva. It's easy. I always have it at the bench. I don't have to look for it. wet the portion of the zonker sweeping it up that's right over the shank of the hook. You don't have to do any more than that. Okay. Then you're going to grab your wire. I use hackle pliers because I'm using the ultra fine. If you use heavier wire it's a little bit easier to manage by hand. And you're going to Separate the fur, give yourself a little bit of a gap to start with, right at the back of the estas. You're going to make a wrap. And then you're going to move yourself forward in a palmer in fashion. The fact that your hair is wet allows you to separate it much easier and you're not worried about getting this as perfect as you might want to in an actual palmer body because all you're doing is anchoring the zonker strip not looking to accomplish much that's why I use the fine wire if your hair starts to dry out a little bit just add a little bit more I use the fine wire because I don't want the palmered wire to be I'm gonna lengthen that a little bit to be a prominent part of the fly. I don't want it to take away from the estas or the movement of the fur. I'm looking just to anchor it enough. I'm not going to let that hair go anywhere. I want to get one more wrap in between there. It starts to pull the hair a little bit. Just work it around. We should get one more wrap on there. Sweep it back. I do a 360 right behind 
or right in front of the fur at the back side of the head. And trim that wire off. And you're going to build your head. At this point, if I have uh, any fibers that are going to include the eye at all, I'll trim them off. But other than that, I don't sweat too much on this head. But you want it to be a prominent head. I'm not trying to make it fancy or turn it into a an Atlantic salmon type head. I'm just going to build it an even taper. And I want it to be long, just like this. I want it to be a prominent red head in the water. And we're going to give that a good four or five turn whip finish. And the last but not least, we're going to coat that head with a liberal coating of Sally Henson's Hard as Nails. Want to soak in good? Give a good coat. Don't be bashful. Let it soak into that flat wax nice and solid. And you'll see as this hair starts to dry, it goes in place quite well. And there it is, the mink coated retriever. I fish it under an indicator. I also dead drift it, stripped in. Either way you want to fish this fly, it has been very effective for me. Based off of a very effective fly to start with, so you, you got to expect that it's going to do well for you. And it, it didn't let me down, it hasn't let me down. It brings some very large fish, especially in the fall uh, and in dirty water. This fly does exceptionally well for me. Give it a try. Let me know what you think. I think you'll be pleasantly surprised. Get that one off of there. There you go. But I think you'll be surprised at how it does in the water for you as well. Hope this adds to your box. Good luck. See you on the water.